What's up everybody, welcome back to Simulation for the Nation and welcome back to episode number 5 now of A Growing Understanding and today is a day that I thought wouldn't be able to happen actually. We tried a couple of times and we had a few technical gremlins along the way but we are here and I'm delighted to say I am joined by none other than Chris the Irish Gamer. Chris, how are you doing today? How we know? I suppose we're not too bad. We're not Excellent too bad at all. News. And you're already sounding much better than uh, last week when we tried, let's put it that way. So. Oh, God, yeah. My <laughs> ping isn't actually too bad. It's sitting around 90 at the minute. Well, 70, 80 at the minute, so it might be a bit of stutters, but we're not doing too bad. Excellent. So, as you can, as everyone can probably make out, we're going to do a little bit of silence today. Uh, I am in the Mighty T Dub with the Welga uh, Round Baylor. Christy bolted for a, a classic, the lovely oh, 11090. Yes. Um, with the fantastic wider wheels and the mud guards as well. Love that setup. And you've got the Mikhail wrapper on. Um, I'm going to let the guests lead the way. Uh, so if you want to head on out to the field, I'll follow behind and we'll uh, get some silage made. Oh, indeed. Lovely stuff. Where are we? No. Oh, I won't put on the beacon, so. Oh, you've got to have a bit of beacon action. Oh, well, well <laughs> I'm just. Right, we'll see how we get up. Yeah, I work hard. Lovely We're stuff. not doing too good. So, as a, oh as man, a, this is a, I must be something downloaded on the computer or something. The last thing we're trying to do is because I couldn't hear you at all. Oh really? Oh well. Oh. So maybe it was just like a, I had problems with updates as well. So maybe it was like a Windows update because they just. Oh, the worst. I actually got. I, I had a big update there that should have been from six months ago. Mm. I, everything just updated on me the last day was. Like I. A pain. I, it's it's I mine started overnight one night. Uh, I left the machine on to render and I uh, came back in the morning and it's it's locked down it won't do a thing and I'm like what the oh, heck's God. happening why wouldn't it and then eventually when the screen came up it says we are updating one of three I was like oh god oh no oh yeah <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave this for about yeah, four yeah that hours. happened me last week sometime I was about to go stream an hour before and, and this all happened I was like no and there's everything with sound went Sound wind, every sort of thing. When I was trying to get it all set back up again mm. in the stream and everything, it was quite funny. But when we got there, as long as we got there in the end. All right. So what I'm going to do here, Chris, whilst I try not to crash, um, I'm just bringing up a list of questions here. We'll, we'll, we've got three fields of silage uh, or grass knocked down to hit that. Uh, so we'll start building. Oh, someone's just pulled out in front of me. You're the worst. Um, oh. So without crashing that. We'll try and um, yeah, we'll try and get these fields knocked down, and we'll try and get more bailed up there. And I'm going to throw a few uh, questions at you as we do this, and we'll uh, we'll see how we get on. Um, so, as a lot of people who uh, who will be listening to this who know you know you from like the the uh, the world of farming simulator and the community that surrounds that. Uh, but what I typically like to do first and foremost is just to get to know kind of uh, a little bit more about about you and about your uh, discovery of uh, FS and how that happened and when it happened. So if you wouldn't mind kind of giving us all just a little bit of a uh, little bit of background, really. God, what? Uh, farm Sim is what? Well, look, we'll go this way. Farm Sim is 10 years this this year. So mm. 10 years, this well, this year I, I discovered Farm Sim, 2008, the very first one. Oh, wow. So I've been in Farm Sim for the last 10 years, you could say. A lot of people would... A lot of people look like if they were from the F from Farm Sim or FS UK, they, they know me as well as Escort Sham is over there. Hmm. But I have my logos and all that. But yeah, I've been in and out of Farm Sim over the last ten years. Oh, nice! And what was it? The how did you how did you kind of find it? How did you discover it ten years ago? Was it something you were actively uh, looking for, or did you kind of stumble upon it? I, well, I stumbled upon. It. I was actually um, more just having a nosy run one day and see what sort of games was out there. Came across FSUK and then kind of went from there. Oh, I found my button there. I couldn't quite find it. Uh, yeah, go. no, I went from there. I've been playing ever since. And then what? Tar then with the internet rumblings and stuff like that, I really not didn't get playing for, or multiplayer until thirteen. Mm. Was it thirteen? Th towards the end of thirteen, and then all through fifteen, I played it. And okay, and uh, so I mean, by the sounds of things, you've been like very much uh, an avid player. Or I keep forgetting. Oh yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm all like I'm all been playing it. Well, say this year now. The last year that's gone by. Say from the middle of last year, a lot of people would have known. I would. I just literally disappeared. Say from last May until mm. kind of September time. I just disappeared off the whole thing. But 
I'm back as I'm back again. Uh, get I, back I guess guess it's it's testament to the game then that you know after having that little bit of time away, it's still something that you want to oh, immediately yeah. jump back into. You know, it's not like ah oh, I'm, I'm over that now. It's just like no no let's carry on from where we left off. It, it did take it did take me a wee while to kind of get back into the old computer. See, well it was mid September time before I actually got sorted, but I got like kind of got I want to get back into stuff again. It took me a month. Even to look at the computer, yeah, it took me a month. Well, that's fair enough. That's understandable. And I mean, do you are you from a farming background originally? Was the or you just um, yeah. is it something that fascinated you? I know farming's been around. It's like it's in the area as well, and I used to do hmm. contracting like like 19 as well. Okay. Something similar to this, but I had a a Ford seventy. Me. Um, a Ford 7810 classic. On oh, a heck of a machine. Oh, yeah, and that veil is gone. And so, oh, were you a, um, were you like a one man army contractor? Yeah, a contractor. He's next door neighbor to me. Oh. But I'm not going to say no. It nearly, <laughs> if I don't say it, you like find out where I live. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's fine. Oh, nice. So, it's nice that, you know, you've got a bit of a. Uh, there's like experiences that to draw on and that you're able to kind of reflect back on now I guess and you know with the with the advancing game engines and di graphics and uh, features you're able to kind of reflect and actually or uh, replay those those memories and uh, experiences you've had from you know years down the line I guess I, oh yeah that's the reason I like it. the way farm sim for me at the minute farm sim is the only way I kind of played because of the mods and stuff. That's the biggest part why I got into Farm Sim. First, the first one, 2008 was pretty much stock. Then mm. 2009 came. 2009 came along, and then there was mods kind of started coming in, but they're not the way they used to be now. You had to put binary codes in, which is was fun. I don't know. A lot of the other crowd will, if they played nine, they will have uh, know what I'm on about. And then uh, that was pretty much for folder was there it's like what we do today but yeah yeah i i must admit i can't remember that i think i i played very briefly in 09 uh but not to that level i didn't even think about that so it's uh i think 11 was my real my real uh introduction i suppose so it's uh it's fascinating to see that it was so much more complex to to introduce mods even back then it was fun <laughs> were you any good at putting binary codes in did you manage to get mods to come through it took me a bit. Of, it took me <coughs> a bit of going, but I got them in. Nice. I got nice. them in. And that makes everything. The, the, and stuff. It makes everything more uh, realistic to yourself, like you're saying. So you know, you can. If someone out there made a, a 7810 classic, you'd be able to drop that straight in, and it, it makes everything just seem mm -hmm. that bit more uh, realistic to yourself. Oh yeah, that like the way we have it, especially with the classic pack, like the 110 and all that stuff. Hmm. To me, like. I'd rather all oh, this stuff compared to what the newer stuff out there, the new big Holland stuff. This stuff to me is like I'm happy days. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, like especially with Peter J and, and I like, like Peter J and CD like at the minute. Yeah. They're the only two that the only two mod, art modders that I know that's doing any sort of Irish stuff based stuff. Yeah. Local, like, and it's and stuff. if you like look at CD models for example, and I'm sure I might touch on some of his work later on. Um, you know he makes. What I really like is he'll quite often give you two options. So he'll give you like the brand new version or the, the slightly used version. So you'll, even if it is an older piece of equipment, you can then make it look used and worn like it, you know, like it would uh, in a real situation rather than shop like shop fresh and shiny oh, yeah. new paint. So that's always a uh, a very nice little addition there. Oh, it is. Ah, uh, yeah, it is nice to have like both, both like old and new. Like I, I don't know. I just like I don't like going into. Depend, I suppose as well with the bigger stuff as well. Depends on what sort of map you're going into as well. Yeah, but yeah. The smaller maps, I'd be way of the smaller stuff. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I mean, for myself, it's like on when I was still around uh, working on on some of our family farms. We had a Fiat 110 90, uh, and then we had Ford uh, the 40 series Fords, so the 77, 78. 
So like, yeah. I, I always have at least one of those tractors kind of within earshot somewhere on one of my game saves. Regardless of what's happening, you know, it'll it'll be there, it'll make a little cameo somewhere. And it's just a nice thing to have, like you say, oh, just yeah. to kind of make it make it your own, really. Oh, that bit of the way. And then you stop there. Ooh, stop. Sorry. Perfect. Awesome. Um, so, obviously, you know, you mentioned that we've been playing for 10 years now across all the different versions. Um, throughout those times, for, so from 09 on over, are we, is there a particular version that really struck home as being like your favourite version, or and was there a maybe uh, a? Sorry, go on. Eleven kind of, I think, I think a lot of one, a lot. Eleven was kind of the basic, and maybe thir thirteen, but definitely eleven coming into thirteen because you did I mod as well. Mm. But they were the main like at the time. And I mod was a big part of farm sim. Yeah, yeah. All stuff that they were doing, and then they re right, they kind of, I think, kind of came in through eleven, but they really started pushed up their mark in two thousand eleven, into thirteen, and then fifteen. Now, to me, fifth, like a lot of people as well, fifth is great. It was good, but I, from what the scripts and stuff came out like five months later, they left, mm. left them what October time. And took until March time to get the scripts out for 15, which slowed rightly down. A lot of stuff that started coming out was coming out towards the end of 15. Which yeah. Of I, I think as well, what? it's yeah. we, we find it a little bit with every new version that arrives, that, you know, it takes modders time to kind of realise what the differences are. And yes, there are always those mods that are converted over from the previous version. So they ne don't necessarily look amazing or don't quite work as well. But it takes a little while for people to um, to really develop the ability to implement new mods into a new game engine or with new physics or whatever it may be. Um, yeah. And then, so like you say, that there's like like three, four month window, and then there's a real influx of good quality new mods arriving, uh, and that makes everything yeah. all the better. Um, I I don't know if you feel the same about this. I'm curious to get your um, opinion. I fa found that. In FS, like you were saying, in FS uh, 13 and 15, 13 mainly, there was a great deal of um, of high quality mods coming around. And there was a lot of people who were making a lot of great mods, like you say, and they had likes of NI Modern who were really kind of leading the way. And then 15, there was a, a bit more of a drought. There wasn't as much... Um, yeah, was. there was There wasn't as m many modders and they weren't making mods to the same high standard. And I think only now, when you look at 17, and let's be honest, we're kind of at the back end of 17 now. Um, only now, as you look at 17, do you see that you have likes of Peter J. Modern, like you say, you've got Matt, Matt XJS, who's working hard on his uh, new DLC, who makes these great looking mods as well. Uh, you've got CD Models, who comes out with fantastic mods uh, very frequently. So only now are you getting to that stage where you see the same level of, um, or, of the same high quality uh, produce. Um, and so it's yeah, almost it, like we've there's been a generation of modders who have left for whatever reason, and now there's a new generation coming in and building up on those skills. If that makes sense. Yeah, uh, a lot of the older ones that's there just kind of they're got they're kind of faded off, and you have a few new ones. But it's going to take where I see it is going to take a, a wee while for them to kind of come up to standard as well. Oh yeah, yeah, and a mass I say mass is like the way the reason I had this as well because. Well, this is not Matt's one, though. This is uh, his friend's buddy's one. But, yeah, his work is... It's a, its insane. Like, I'm look, actually looking forward to that classic pack when it's come out. Oh, I know. Even, I know. Even more than the Ropa pack that's coming out as well. I'm not too bothered about that. I'm more interested in that. I think I'll, the, whichever map I'll be playing on at the time will have everything stripped out and just bring all of that DLC and just use it all, you know? I'm, I'm hoping because it's slightly older machines, but they're a little bit smaller. That I'm not still using just Oakfield Ben because it'll take me forever. But uh, you know, it'll be it'll be nice to get like a, a slightly smaller field I can plow with a small four furrow plow, for example. I'll be oh, a, yeah. a little bit better. But uh, yeah, I totally agree. It's going to be phenomenal when it comes out, and it's, I wouldn't be surprised if it's their giant's best-selling DLC. Uh, in since they started launching DLCs, I would say it's it's well within the uh, the chance of uh, being right up there at least oh it's definitely is going to be it's going to be up there like at the top five anyways at least oh easily a lot of people are, a lot of people are looking for classic stuff as well especially when you can go on console as well yeah yeah and i think that it's 
I was listening to a stream, uh, I can't remember whose stream it was, I think I was listening to Rainbow Dave's stream actually, and they were talking about that and how people always want to have a classic tractor or two in in the setup, you know, yes, yeah. you, can, you can go in the mod hub and you can pick up like a Fent 1050 or a, the, a, a huge John Deere or whatever it may be, but there's something about when you have the detail of like this T-Dub range or the, the Fiat you're in over there, you, when you've got that little detail there and you want a smaller tractor, it might just be to run around the yard or you might want it just to look after the... Um, you know the the forage wagon or something. Then you want something with a little bit of de detail and that bit of character. Then you've got to go old for that, really. I don't think yeah, you you can get that. As much as the the new fence are great, yeah, they're a little bit characterless. I think. Oh yeah. Oh, that I'd say like <clears throat> I'd rather this stuff than compared to the newer stuff because that's what <clears throat> like especially the hundred and ten night. Yeah. Mm. I've grown up like grown up with it, like them around neighbors and stuff. That's what you see around it, us. Like, come silage season, the 11090 straight pipe, just horsing it with the silage trailer on the back, is, uh... Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't or get much around, more... Well, or you'd have a bale around behind. Well, around where I live, it's more bales that's been done compared to pit silage. There's only one, really, but the okay. rest is all silage. You'd obviously need the 110 with a bale around. Mm. Well, it's on, the wrap. it's on the wrapper now these days, so it is. Well, still, it's still nice to see it out and about. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Especially when it's in the, in good nick. Um, oh yeah. It's like the I'm sure you you've saw or you've caught up on the the Grassmen series when they had the, the the their fit that they raffled off. That was in beautiful condition. Really nice looking oh, thing. Oh yeah. Very nice. As was the it Ford was. they had. Um, I'm that was nice. The teed up then as well. That's only recently gone to a new home. Yeah, it got raffled off at Christmas, right? Alrighty, uh, so what we're going to do at this moment, Chris, we're going to just take a very little break here and uh, we're going to come back to you in just a second for part two. Alright guys, we are back for part two of A Growing Understanding. I've got Bob here working with me. Uh, for those of you who don't know who have just joined us, Bob is Chris the Irish Gamer. Say hello, Chris. How's things and how are we all and how are we now? Excellent stuff. Um, so, Chris, I just wanted to... For the audience out there who kind of watch you stream and follow your channel, obviously we know of your um, your kind of devotion, if you like, to, to Farming Simulator, but they'll also notice that when you when we watch your streaming, there's a kind of a, a whole variety of, of games that you'll you'll switch over to to stream uh, from. Is there a certain is there a certain genre that you uh, prefer? Would is FS still your your favourite, or would you prefer, do you prefer like a, a Euro truck, or um, for example, we had fishing in the Barents Sea of late? Is there a, a, s a specific style that you enjoy more? Mm, no, farm sim probably will be the main main the main thing on the channel, and then the rest are just kind of change up the channel. Hmm. Else, just don't get burnt out of farm sim. It's just something a bit different. Then you'll have rally which is fun you'll just see me chopping threes down <laughs> see me chopping threes down and then your truck your truck is good as well it's just a chill game at the minute I'm back got back into the game now a pro mod running at the minute mm, okay is... and there was a new version of pro mods oh, yeah. recently right yeah the last few days I, mean, I got that installed it's uh, to do with um, the heavy haul as well and that new deal oh. that came out there not so long ago oh nice yeah I I've heard I have, um, I, I, I own Euro Truck Simulator. I quite like it. It's like you say, a very chill out stream, but I don't really, or a very chill out game really. I like just to plug in a route and then go and drive for like an hour or so and then, you know, park up somewhere and call it a day. But I can't really get into any more than that. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's something you keep That's, working on. It's, it's good. It's, it's good if you're like a multiplayer, depending on like who you're with and that. Sometimes it can, you, you do have your gremlins. Hmm. Oh yeah, people coming on just to crash into you. Yeah, but well, if you keep out the busy areas and just kind of go down to the quiet area, it's grand. Okay, oh nice. And how are you getting on with uh, fishing in the Barents Sea? How is that working out for you? Ah, it's actually not doing too bad. I haven't been on it now in the last few days or so. I need to get back into it again now. But it is, that is something completely different. Like, I haven't really done much fishing before. So it is something a bit different as well, and it's nice, chill. It's a chill game as well. Mm, you just yeah, definitely. set it off, and you have different tiers to get to, to get different chips and stuff. Yeah, nice. I must admit, I joined oh, yeah, into one is. of your streams with it on the other day there, and uh, it's certainly, it's it's like a nice refreshing change really because it means, 
like it keeps it keeps the, your your content like fresh and interesting for yourself because I think that's always important with uh, with streams, particularly with what I really like about your streams is when you when when like you you join into a stream and watch one of your streams, you're very inclusive. So you allow you know you're always talking to all everyone who comes into the stream and answering questions they may have and keeping everyone kind of feeling involved, which is which is a I'm sure uh, very difficult to do when you're trying to also you know concentrate on what's happening on screen, not crash into something, and you know learn a new game. So that's really quite <laughs> interesting. Uh, if you know me, this stage you want to just crash into everything in sight. Uh, ah, yeah, it's it's it does take it does take a while to kind of get the hang of kind of watching the game. Mm. And sometimes you might be away working away like or driving around, and you're doing fine ch talk and chat. I try and try and interact as much as I can and sometimes I like say back I'm just I'm kind of going back on myself now this time last year my streams used to be a lot a lot busier than they were now like but I knew that because I, the way I just disappeared off yeah just, off the, but yeah, I, I was the way like you just come in you'd be able to play a game and you just watch the chat because I have two screens so it's very handy I think that's the way you've got to do it yeah you'd be a bit screwed without that I suppose I, to be honest, I couldn't deal with just the one screen now. I need to. Like even if I'm not streaming, I'd always, I've always two things on the two screens. I might have Facebook or I might have YouTube on one and Discord and the other one or something or Team Chat. Or... I'm, I'm so, gonna be, I'm gonna be nicely here. I'm gonna put bales where they won't roll down the hill for you. Oh, no, that's grand. I'm gonna be think of the rapper man here. Oh, that's what I'm going. Mm. Lovely. Oh. Uh, when like when, when I used to like I'm, I'm going RL now like this used to be fun. They just dump bales anywhere, and you'd have to try and fish them out yourself. <laughs> out of like so the hedgerows, out of fences. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be that bad, but if you're doing like that, starting off, if the depending on what sort of mood they were in, like yeah, they could just dump it off, and you'd have to try and fish them to get them to part the challenge really. Yeah, not too bad. You could like if you hit them at a right at a certain angle, you could always spin them around. Yeah, yeah. I used to do a, a little bit of uh, before we packed it in. I was I would follow the combine with the round baler, and I'd be uh, um, it'd be my old man who drive the the combine. I'd be coming up in one of the in a little seven seven forty with the uh, one of the old like really old class Roland balers, like the old boxy ones. Um, oh yeah, 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 and had one of those in the back. And if he was feeling particularly spiteful with us for whatever reason, um, you know, he would just like stop in the middle of a, a, a run in the middle of a field, and just leave like a mountain of straw that there's absolutely no way he can get through <laughs> without without getting out. And you know, just kind of like pushing it into a bit more of a, an accessible spot. And yeah, I can feel your pain with that one because you you could see him just chuckling away in the seat as I'm getting out and sweating away in the oh, yeah. in the sun. <laughs> Hey, give you something to do as well. Keep you on your toes. <laughs> that, that was pretty much the the words that were muttered. Yeah. Oddly enough, the words I uh, responded with were never quite so kind. Okay. So, um, so as we move on a little bit here, um, obviously I mentioned in the beginning that you know we're, we we uh, we know you and uh, as like a streamer, but also as a, like a let's play and a producer of, of time lapse series. Uh, is there a certain output that you prefer to do? Do you prefer the aspect of being able to sit there and stream, or do you like to kind of challenge yourself with a some sort of production value? Like some, I've watched some of your time lapses of late, which have been really good in the way that they've been created with uh, like good music behind it, and just keeping it all like fluid and interesting. Which I know is not an easy thing to do. Um, is there a certain aspect which you enjoy? If I, to be honest, if I was able to stream, I'd stream more because I, I just prefer streaming. I, it, uh, I've tried to do the let's plays. It's like I used to do a few bitches, just record them and see and mm. listen back, but it just never worked out. But I could, I was able to streams a lot better because I was people to talk to. I just couldn't think up something to say. I was like, you'd be five minutes in, and you'd be stuck. Yeah. For something to say, but yeah, and the time lapses, time lapses are pretty much easy to do. You just let you go and record for maybe half an hour, depending, depending on what length you want to, and just have a nice. It's the music more. Try to find music to, to fit farm sim as well. Mm, definitely. And trying to get music that won't get copyrighted. That's the that's the main part. 
That's yeah. the big and one. And I also find trying to find music that has enough length to it because you want it, you know, you don't want to keep having to try and find, even if you're doing a time lapse that's, let's say, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes long, a lot of music out there you can find that like, great. Well, you know, it fits FS, it's uh, copyright free, great, and it's only 90 seconds long. So I'm going to have to find, you know, I'm going to have to find five, six of these just to make it fit, uh, which is a bit frustrating. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. Or I usually go on YouTube and go LCS music, and that usually covers. Depending, you'll always have to get three or four, but I usually try and get long ones if I can. Mm, and, I was, and then try and find something that fits around farm sim as well. It's something just to fit farm sim that sounds nice as well, and doesn't sound a bit off, which is really hard. Yeah, but it's not easy. That, yeah. Oh, I stopped the builder. Perfect. Um, yeah, and I. I I, I know what you mean when you you know you sit there it's like great there's this new map that comes out and I really want to do like a let's play on it let's say Oakfield for example and you have all these ideas of what to talk about and then you look down and you record and you're like oh after nine minutes and I, I'm completely blank of things to say completely devoid of any material yeah. and at what point it's like well how, how many episodes can I do with this and mm -hmm. at the same time you don't want to sit there and just talk about you know oh well that's a nice looking tree you can't really feel 20 yeah. minutes of just, oh, that's a nice car, it's a nice tree. And, you know, 10, 15, 20 episodes of just commenting on what you see can get a little bit tedious. And I think there's only a select few people out there who can do it really well, in my mind. Um, you know, and who, oh, can, yeah. who can actually uh, hold it and captivate a, a viewer for, for long enough. Um, but yeah, so it's certainly not an easy task, much harder than it may look, for sure. Um, okay, so. Oh, I happened to just catch a crash there as well. <laughs> it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a video without me crashing into something. <laughs> I mean, I'll be disappointed if by the end of this, at least one of us has not got a vehicle on the side. You know, we need, <laughs> we need to put something onto its mirrors. Oh yeah, definitely. Right, come on, okay. oh, we come. Right, no, nope. all you. Oh, the one thing I do hear about bales as well. If you're ever lining up to bales, it'll automatically. You're just about to roll into it, and next thing, oh, I'm going to move. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, I, the worst part is when you're when you're leading them in, stacking them, and you know you've got your bale forks on the front, and like you say, you're you've lined up the silage grab or the bale grab on the front. And you're just about to either like close the grab up or pick the bale up, whatever it might be. And you're right, it just like shifts like half a foot to the left, just so it can't quite grab it properly. The most annoying thing. And there's nothing we can do about that. That's just kind of you know. The, the physics oh, yeah, of the yeah, moment. It Hopefully, it might change, but it's. Uh, I'm not confident. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how it comes in 19, I suppose. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, if we move on, if for anyone out there who is kind of currently looking at the uh, current Let's Play producers or YouTube or Farm Sim producers, and they were looking at thinking of like you know starting up their own YouTube channel, um, would there be would you have any words of advice for those guys who are looking to start up there and entering into this world uh, from kind of from scratch really the way I pick pick a game that you're most comfortable with and well the one thing I'd say but I've from what I've heard is try not watch many other people have kind of have your own spin off mm. and just feel like and just try and think of your own ideas for the series or whatever you're trying to do and just go with it it's go it's like a, it's not going to happen just overnight it's going to take a while it took me a year to get to a thousand subscribers and i was only doing like back then i was only doing like small and small videos but i kept at it and then i was able to do a bit of streaming and that got a bit more yeah and then i was up a bit up to the current and it just kind of it's always taken over but the first year is usually the hardest especially now with the whole new regime that's going on at the minute yeah, with the new monetization support. rules and the yeah. advertising, exactly. It gives, you, it gives you something to work towards as well. So. It does, and I think yeah. that when you look at it from that perspective, because originally it was, what, 10,000 views was, like, the, the benchmark? Oh. And, like, if you look at it from the perspective now, okay, so, yeah, you might get 10,000 views relatively quickly, but then you'll um you know once you reach that thousand subscribers you should have met all of the other benchmarks as well so like the the four thousand viewing hours or whatever else that may be so by the time you get to the the one thousand subscribers which is probably going to be the hardest feat everything else will be in place and you'll you'll have an audience there that is bigger than you would have had when you just reached 
um, when you just reach a th uh, 10,000 views. So, mm -hmm. my mind at least, when you when you get to that stage and you, you start to produce content after that, you're gonna have you're gonna be better off for it anyway, I would think. Oh, but yeah. I mean, at the it's same. Not Go on, sorry. The way I see it, it's it's not that hard to get to the threshold, right? If you do an hour, well, I I put it this way, I heard this somewhere. If you do an hour, a stream for an hour and you have six people in that stream for the whole hour, that is six hours worth of stream time. So mm. that adds out towards your to get to your threshold. So even if you're doing a couple of them an hour for the week, add all them six people and they stay in the stream for that hour, them six people over that seven days. That won't take too long. It wouldn't you it wouldn't take you long to get to where you want to be and just and be yourself because the way i see it, an audience will see straight through you as well if you're not enjoying what you're doing as well yeah definitely that's the one thing they, they'll see through you straight away definitely and particularly when you look at where the market that's out there now in terms of how many producers there are of youtube if or of farming simulator for example if if you're doing it just for the money to become a YouTube star, let's say, and you know you want to make all this money off videos, A, that's probably unlikely, gonna, not, it's not going to happen, but B, that, like you very well say, it's going to reflect through on your video that you're not enjoying what you're doing, or the game, or the content you're producing, so that will shine through, and then everyone will be like, well, this isn't, he's not really in, like, involved in this, or giving it his all, so I'll go and find someone else who is, and I'll go and watch their stuff. Mm -hmm. and then oh yeah. It's, it's, it's very easy to do that because there's a, a lot of different people out there so it's certainly something that is very worth uh, bearing in mind um, but it's also fascinating to see where it goes I think for sure um, but yeah it's I would say that from a how important would you say with with the FS at least the community is to the to a new starter so someone who is looking to get out there and, and build how how would you say they should interact with the community just be yourself and be chill. Well, it's hard. It's hard to explain it as well. For when I start doing, I don't know. It's just be yourself, and if they're enjoying, it, they will. After time, you'll start to notice people coming back and different. Especially when it starts getting busy. Mm. When you get, start get more people in, you will start noticing people that's regularly coming back, and if they're coming back. Then you know you're kind of doing something right, and you know they're coming back to support you as well. Yeah. Which is pretty good. Nice. Awesome. All right, at this stage, uh, we are going to take break number two. Uh, when we come back here, we'll finish up this field. We might have to do a little bit more mowing to keep the, the bale fed, but we'll figure that one out. Uh, but yeah, we'll come back to you in just a short while. What's up, guys? Welcome back to part number three uh, of a growing understanding here with Chris, the Irish gamer, who is currently throwing bales around the field, I think. I am indeed. I am indeed. <laughs> It doesn't want to play nice at all this time. Oh, ah, you've missed it again. It's gone. You'll get it. <laughs> what? No. All right then. Like um, as we were, as we kind of pre touched on earlier, you've obviously been around the the farm and simulator franchise for quite some time. Uh, you know, you've seen many iterations of it from 09 through to where we stand now, and obviously FS19 is on the horizon, but. In that time, in let's say like the last two or three years in particular, we've seen the development of new games uh, being spoken about and talked about, but now we're actually starting to see uh, these games actually coming out to the forum. Um, so if you think about it off the top of my head, we've got uh, this Pure Farming. Uh, farming Dynasty was around very quickly for a short while, and now we're obviously the early access of Cattle and Crops arrived. That was kind of the most significant. Um, with with that in mind, there have you. Um, what are your thoughts on like the the rival uh, competitors? Really, uh, are there any that stand out to you as being the most likely to succeed? Or, or what are your thoughts on them, Chris? Mm, the one that comes to mind now, CNC would be wouldn't be far off, but it still has a good bit to go. Mm. Uh, real farming, I I haven't uh, I haven't seen that in the battle now, and farming's in the seat well from what people well, from what's been happening over the last few while that's like it's, it's gone in the water but CNC has probably the closest running to farm sim at the minute it's hmm. still a long way off but it's going to give farm sim a good run for its money 
which is nice to see as well because Farm Sim has had the reins for the last eight years, give or take nine years. Yeah, without definitely. Without any real competition. I think it's from from what I've seen of CNC. Obviously, there's a early access out there now, so a few of the guys have been out kind of previewing this and uh, kind of playing, downloading off Steam where it's available now and having a, having a bit of a look around more than anything else. It's it, it's based more on being like a simulation game first, whereas perhaps, you know, with FS it's more arcade based and then you, depending upon how serious you'd like to play it, you can add mods and scripts in there to kind of dial up the the, um, the immersion really, I guess would be the a correct way to, to describe it. Um, is there a certain aspect of CNC that appeals to you at the moment? Is there a certain <coughs> thing that you look at and say, you know what, that's going to make this game potentially far better than... Uh, not at the minute. There is aspects there. The see, like I see control is one that uh, at the minute I see is a big one at the minute. It's already been from I played about well, the new version there was it last night just off screen. Just see what's happening. Hmm. That's uh, already I see. Well, that's been in it for a good while. Um, what else is in it? You've kind of different seasons and stuff. Well, that's the farm same as in it. But what else did I know? That's kind of. You have animals, you have a cat, you have, well, the cat's been in it for a wee while, but I've noticed now they've brought in a dog as well, mm. lately, since the last time I played that. Uh, Not the only else, developer uh, to bring in the dog. From what I've heard, Farm Sim as well, but that's from what we've heard, and horses, and Farm Sim have horses come in too. That's going to be an interesting one too, depending on what sort of way they the go around the horses, I suppose. Yeah. Now, I'll, we're definitely going to touch on kind of the FS19 coming up in the future there. Do you think that, you know, if you look at the likes of Pure Farming, who are trying to kind of harness, they've got a few brands in there, I noticed they've got JCB in there, and I think, have they got Landini? Is that correct, I think? I uh, think so. They've got, they've got a smaller brand like that. So that, But they're also focusing on, you know, trying to get a bit of uh, um, different, like di diversification in terms of the type of farming so they're spreading out into like different continental farming so you could go to Asia where they'll be farming rice farming or they could go to um, North Amer uh, South America where they'll be looking at a different kind of uh, farming again so we have somewhat we have grapes don't we and have, we have cocoa beans as well so it's a whole manner and variety of different approaches is that something that can that you find interesting or uh, is it that it's just not enough to keep be. you from what I've heard, and I don't know how through this, apparently there's no mod support, which is probably oh. a big factor. From what I've heard now, apparently there's not the mod support, and from what I heard as well, the DLC, the sheep, the sum to animals, a part of the animals that is not, apparently you have to get that as a DLC or something like that, so I don't know. Wow. From what, that, that's where I'm going off, yeah. from what I've heard and stuff. And it's odd that that happens because if you look at farming simulator it wouldn't be the game it is now without the community and the the modern community that goes with it you know and yep. it's without that growth it would be pure farming still in a, essentially in a nutshell it would have that uh, minimal um integration or um kind of customization for a, a user and it would be very arcade based only now you know cattle and crops implemented the seasons and then rightly so realismus came out with the seasons mod, which has now been incorporated into like consoles, and then you assume will be there'll be a version of the seasons in nineteen. You would they'll assume. Um, down. So it's only only now is that coming in really, but it's odd that you would see manufacturers or game developers who would go out there out there from the start, kind of deny any potential uh, modifications, but then also deny basic kind of almost like farming essentials like animals it doesn't have to be sheep it could be any could be goats could be anything but just denying that like animal husbandry uh, aspect which is kind of very strange okay let's get this checked out here oh, I'm keep doing that. there we go someone's doing that perfect and it'd be also interesting to see how uh would at the moment as we see obviously uh, cattle and crops lost uh, horse they had horse as a manufacturer which is quite a, a power move from giants it looks like um 
would that would the lack of brands there be something that would deter you away uh, or do you need that main branding or is kind of the gameplay aspects a little bit more important or do they kind of work hand in hand for you um it's hard to know at the minute see the way i see well, CNC is early access, so it still has a good bit to go in. It's it going to take yeah. another year, at least another. And one thing I did know is, say if you're sitting in the vehicle and you set a waypoint, say you're at the shop and you set a waypoint and you're sitting in it and you press a, letter, a number, it'll literally drive away itself without you having to go messing. That's huh. already built in, like, like course play. Yeah. Literally, you just say a set a waypoint, say you're in this field. I don't know how how farmers or CNC will cope if it has hedges and stuff in it and stuff. Yeah, that's true. But literally, yeah. you go from A to B, and there's a yes. I just I don't know. <laughs> that was what I. <laughs> the um the hired Her worker does seem to be quite quite intuitive. Yeah. Let's say and far uh, far advanced from from FS where you know you said you said a cosplay away or you said a hired worker away, and you can guarantee within a few minutes it's crashed into a tree that. Like the most obscure tree in the field that was almost impossible, it's 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 only gone found uh, it somehow. Oh yeah, um, no, it, it is interesting. But even with the trailer, say if you do maze and stuff, even the early versions, it was able to do that as well. If you head it off, it, it comes. You call it. It comes to the field without you even have to set a course up first. Well, that's send really it good. Off again. Yeah. And then it just finds the field, knows where to go and tip, and knows how to come back and find you again. That's, yeah. kind of, that's kind of really neat. Nice. Uh, well, certainly, I think the great thing about what they're doing is, you know, it's if the main thing we get out of, let's say, cattle and crops development is an, a real shake up for giants, you know, a real uh, kick to let them know that, hang on, if you don't do anything here, you're going to get left behind, sort of thing. Uh, it's going to really shake them up and, and make those guys really kind of work on finding a improving finding new ways to 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 improve their game engine be it or the you know the gameplay aspect uh if if we get that then that'll be good alone giants are, oh yeah giants are well they're well capable of doing what they are from what i've heard as well this is just from what i've heard apparently their engine is a custom engine their own custom engine for farms in so a oh. lot of the stuff they're able to do they're able to do it especially mm. now that we've heard like apparently from what I've seen, it, we have a demonic sky coming in. Like, you have a, a real sun and a moon, and clouds are shifting in the sky as well. And they change color before it starts raining, so you can decide, you can tell what's happening as well. I think that's huge. I think that's the one thing. Like, Seasons was great. Seasons was a real eye opener, really. Um, and I, I have no idea how you even begin to code something like like Seasons. I just have no idea. Yeah, I did. Uh, a, a basic level of coding at one stage in my career and now I just couldn't even think about it it's you know blows my mind anyway it's it, the seasons was great and visually looked stunning but at the same time you still had this sky that was kind of letting you down like like you say the lack of an actual sun was always like a real a real killer um, or you have oh, this yeah, beautiful absolutely. skyline at night but there'll be no moon there as well same thing it's, it's just kind of a, a bit well, of a letdown this is not like Ox Oxen David was able to, he had a custom, was it in for Tartan Farm? Uh, because it was scripted, it couldn't really go on console, but he had a moving sky, a cloud in the sky as well, which is pretty cool. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah. And he's come a long way, in, especially, well, as say we're kind of, say, 17 now, and Oakfield is out at the minute. It's probably the second best, apart from Giant's own maps, that is probably one of the best optimized maps out there at the minute, functionality. Yeah, I'd say so, definitely. And, and especially with the new script to have in it as well, especially if it, if you have low end PC, where the vehicles disappear inside the shed as well. I think like clip distance. Yeah, that's a really smart idea because everyone always stores all of their equipment at a certain yard, and then the second you cross into that yard, you know your your frame rate uh, crash. Oh, yeah. and so it's really nice to see they've uh, thought of that. And there was I noticed, you know, when you look at Frontier Design, uh, Bullet Bill released a uh, kind of an update to his. Um, American map, uh, low and oak, and it's you know it seems to be even more optimized as well. So it's like those two work together to continue to kind of somehow enhance oh, yeah. the uh, the optimization when you think that like they've kind of reached the limit. Mm, they the, the, the try to push each other. I say that much. They mm. the push each other. 
But the, that's the way I can go back to kind of backtrack a small bit. That was script. That script for the shed and stuff. That script was actually around in 13. So. All right. Eating. That's from, that's from what Bill Bill was saying as well. So. Yeah. But Ian improved it. He recently joined front Is supposed to be a pretty good scripter as well. So it'd be interesting to see what he comes up with a slide. So. I'm, uh, I'm just going to make a little maze for you here to try and weave in and out. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I kind of... <laughs> you, f you failed the first test there, it looks like, Chris. <laughs> uh, I think we're about done in this field, so we might have to go and... Uh, we'll head north once we finish wrapping all these up, and then we'll... Uh, we've got a few more fields up the top I think we can jump onto. I've got a full one, so I'm going to sit and uh, watch you. Watch you do your work here. Uh huh. The play is nice. Come right. Ready. Start. I know. So as we, yeah, you know, as we touched on that, obviously we know 90 FS19 is is coming. Um, we yeah, obviously at the time of record, and only this week gone did we have the reveal trailer came about. Uh, Revealed a few, anyways. A kind of, kind of a few small things. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't hugely um, revealing, but it, you know, it gave us a little bit of a tease more than anything else, I suppose. Um, what would you? What was your? What were your uh, impressions from, from this this trailer? What do you gain from it? And do you do you feel like it showed you anything big, it or is there anything you'd like to see? It was cheeky. I'll tell you. I'd say that. I'd say that it was a very cheeky. Mm. But that's not from what. That isn't actually the proper CIG. No. The, the, the one we'll see the proper one in um, E3. But was there's a lot of speculation going on from what I've heard around the community. There's oh man, Discord servers were going crazy, right? Oh yeah, everywhere was going. Apparently, if you're in um, the giant saw in Discord uh, when it happened, there was theories galore, and the horses. Anyways, we all knew the horses were in. Yeah. Well, it was confirmed. You can see them in the background and the dog as well. And then there was the key ring. I don't know about. There's a lot of conspiracy about the key that he was holding in his hand. Farmer. No, and I saw that. Another... People were thinking, oh, you know, it's a John Deere key ring, it's this key ring, it's this one. And the, uh, there's a lot of, like, a lot of guesswork. And I think, and also, like, an awful lot of research of, like, this, this like, zooming in on the, yeah. on the key ring and trying to figure out what it was. And there's one thing. Did anyone know us as well? And I drew on this is just me, like this is not a whole percent true, this could be I could be wrong. We could get a third person view from the character itself. Because the way he was walking around, I that could be me, but mm. that was something as well. Yeah, that's not but, bad at the point. But from reckon there was from what I was told, apparently there was nothing in that video that's kind of hidden secrets or happening in that video apparently from what I was told. Oh uh, so okay, so we'll have to wait for the Perhaps we shouldn't be kind of digging quite so deep into the into the video and just. I mean, E3 is what usually June, April, May, June yeah, time. Yeah, another couple. Of, yeah, give or take. Okay, I'm sure we'll get some more like little teasers what? before then. But I'm sure in terms of like kind of machines or or brands, we won't hear anything until the CGI trailer that rolls around. Yeah, more than likely. Or yeah, or we mightn't hear anything at all. But more than likely, that's what we'll hear because they said it wasn't finished yet. That the proper one. But uh, it's see. very suspicious why they release something this early. There's something else going on that they're not saying either. So, was there a, a release of another game? I'm just trying to think because Cattle and Crops kind of came out, but not on the same Real day. Farm. I think Farm is dropping as well, apparently, uh -huh. in around the next couple weeks. So I don't know, but it's odd they've never done this before. Even for the last one, we didn't yeah. see it until. So, oh, well. ah. As I said, it's a healthy environment to keep giants on their toes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And would you, if we kind of look at um, FS19, apart from what we know already, is there any, like, other two or three things that you would really like to see come in that would improve everything for you yourself? I see be a nice one to have in, come in as standard, and mm. maybe prop promoters. I know there's a mod, apparently there's a mod out there that I didn't know for 30 or for 17, but mirrors. Because mirrors would be a lot easier to use if they were movable at the minute. They're yeah. just there. They're just no use. an ornament at the moment. 
Yeah, but I see definitely I see be a big one. Like even for a standard like better than. I'll go back to um because the well, Giants are well were well able to put it in. Black Sheep, this it'd be a good example. They were able to get the IC on console as well because the way they done it as well. Oh okay. Um, with their massive pack, they were able mm. to get the ice like the opening doors and stuff. So it wouldn't be that hard for them to get into the game. And you have seasons, but seasons it will be because it's in the base game on or that new map. I don't have it now because I didn't have any use for it, but the seasons was meant to that, so we'll definitely have it some sort in 19 anyways, even if it's a toned down version compared to what we have now. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it might be, like you say, very much a little bit more diluted version, and who knows, we might get a mod to kind of enhance that, but then even if it's just something basic like, you know, the dynamic sky featuring in there as well, that would be really quite quite something just to add on that like you say that extra immersion factor really um in terms of if we look at kind of brands are there obviously we know we've from the kind of discussion threads in the forums we were kind of told to expect something something big uh is there a brand out there that you would like to see more than any other obviously the two big ones that we don't have access to at the moment are class and and john deere Either of those that really stick out to you, or any other brand yeah. that you'd like to come and see? I'd probably go more class, because okay. we have a bit more of a range of stuff. John, I, yeah, I like, I like, I like to see the two of them in, because it will, like, it will be some. Uh, that'd be major if them two actually came on board. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, the brands, New Holland is still in a. Uh, JCB are still in it for next new one. The. There's a few others I heard, I heard as well, so I can't remember what now, but I know JCB are still in. New Holland is still in. Hmm. Uh, maybe Massey, I don't know. Maybe they're bringing in more range of the Masseys that we don't know. And we have two new maps as well. Well, we'll have the new map. Uh, not, well, I, and we have a new one they're on about. Could be European one. I'm not too sure. So it's all Terry at the minute, like, so. Yeah. I think that I think class would would certainly have a little bit more in, uh, like interest to me. Let's say for the uh, for the Harvestin range of mods, I, I prefer the Harvestin machines, like the class Jaguars, for example, rather than the the John Deere equivalent. I think it's like the eighty four hundred series forage harvesters, those kind of things. But that said, I think yeah. you know the, the the tractor range would be more interesting from a John Deere standpoint because they could if you look at what Giants do they you know if you look at like New Holland for example yes they have like the T7s and the T8s or the, the huge big the, the big um, articulated tractors are they T9s I think they are um, mm -hmm. and but then they'll also have like the 8340 so like the older classic machine so if you looked at it from that perspective John Deere would have more range because it could bring in like a 3050 or a uh, one the Six uh, thousand series, and whereas class have only kind of got like the the, the Axians or the Aryans, so they couldn't really give you that diversity. But um, and you know, aside from that, if you look at it, class have like a lot of forage equipment: balers, mowers, forage harvesters. John Deere have pretty much the same. Uh, they've got probably a similar sort of combine range. Um, they both have telehandlers, so there's a quite a lot of uh, equality across the board there, but. As, as I say, like it's either either one or the other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think John D would make a little bit more sense because of the global appeal, perhaps. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they're slightly. If you look at North America, for example, there's a lot more John D than there are class, um, and that would make a heck of a lot more sense. But whether or not they actually uh, make that happen, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Um, but at this stage, we are going to take our third and final break. Uh, we'll come back to you guys in just a second there, so uh, hang on and we'll see you just after this. Alrighty folks, welcome back to the fourth and final part of A Growing Understanding. Um, so Chris, as we've kind of touched on that already, but I just want to do a little bit more digging into it really. As we know, FS... Uh, the, the platform, the franchise, wouldn't be where it is today without the such a strong community behind it. So that community can be, you know, just players, uh, developers, modders, map creators, whatever it may be. It just wouldn't be where it is today without having such an intense kind of following and passionate group. 
I, I think that kind of passion really came through when you saw, you know, as we just touched on the the release of this news of FS19, and then all of like the the hype that came with it, and all of this excitement and buzz around forums that led off the back of like a a trailer that, let's be honest, didn't really have a great deal of uh, information to it. It was more of just a quick tease. Um, with that in mind, if, if, if let's say if I was a newcomer to, uh, to the world of Farming Simulator, just picked it up on Steam today, how would you describe somewhere like FSUK, the forum, how would you describe that to them and what would you say would be its, like, its strongest features? I've been, I've been, I've been with FSUK for about uh, Dame Lint has been playing Farm Sim. That's how I found Farm Sim through FSUK, mm. <laughs> to be very honest. I have a joy in the, back in the day, it used to be, um, you know, that's where a lot, of, that's where the place would be to go to get mods, because there was always mods being uploaded. Now it's kind of more formally kind of related. And the, mm. the last while they've changed up their, their homepage where you can put more stories on the front page. But they're still getting their mods in. They're still loading open mods as well. But yeah, it's, it is a good place to, to go as well to get information. Like, you'll always find someone that's willing to help you or there's always someone there to find. Or there's a lot... This is the YouTube section as well. Yeah. Where you can go in yeah. and find your videos or there's different creators that you might like and you might follow them from there. Definitely. I think yeah. it's what's fascinating, like you say, like for 15, it was the place to go to get reliable mods. And I'm not saying that they, they, they still have a very strict uh, mm -hmm. forum for testing and there's a very strict criteria to launch a mod there. But it's certainly a, um, you know, it is a criteria now where, you know, they're not, because of like, I, I assume it's because of Mod Hub, uh, you know, that's the kind of go to place. They have kind of turned their attention more to the to the creation and the development and the developing support really. So like, you know, even if you have the basic problem with a map, like where can I find a sell point for eggs on Oakfield? You know, there's the, you can just type that into a forum and someone will be there straight away and you know, probably put up a screenshot, highlight yeah. it, or say, oh, it's here, it's here. But then if you really want to drill down a little bit further, you go into, you know, I'm writing the script for this for my map. I'm building. This won't work why am I getting this error, what's causing this error and uh, you know, if you don't know the answer you can guarantee there'll be two or three people in there somewhere who do and oh, yeah. who can really pull that out for you which is which is really great um, but yeah, certainly somewhere, and let's like say the, the new aspect of it now where it's just like kind of, hey I've made this video about lifting silage here let's put this on there and let's see what people think and you know, there's a follow in there, they'll say if they like it or if they don't like it and uh, you know, it's great, I think it's a nice little place to kind of um, just share the experience, really, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and that's where, like, that's where you. I don't know how big of a thing it is now, with um, you know, like the contracting groups that used to be mm. a big thing. I don't think I don't think it's as big as it used to be. Definitely thirteen and fifteen. Well, thirteen was the virtual farms. I was in a virtual farm on FSUK. Yeah. And then I was in contracting as well, so I kind of. As you say, I've covered everything on farm sim from multiplayer to single player to virtual farms to contracting. But you still, with with farm sim, you're always going to make new people no matter what you do. You'll always have a multi game to find. Yeah, yeah, somewhere. definitely. You'll always get into somewhere. All right. Um, no, I think it's, when so when you first started there, like you mentioned back in '09, was the I assume at around '09 the the FSUK. Uh, must have only just been kind of coming into its fruition. It must have just been starting out, so it must have been a lot smaller with a lot limited range of, and scope of things to do. It was a lot smaller at the time. Mm, it, okay. it was a different name at the time as well. I can't remember what it was now, but I know it was a different name. Was that something Info? Was that what it was? Yeah, LS Info or something along them lines. Yeah, okay. Alrighty. Um... Here's a quick question. We have a little bit, a few more questions to go. There's a grass field over yonder behind the old uh, sheds there. Um, uh -huh. Do you want to drive the shiny Deutz and cut that, or do you want to drive the baler? What would you like? Uh, I draw. I chance the baler. <laughs> I might, I might right. get on a bit better with the baler. We'll get into the little teed up. Jeez, Give her a whack. This uh, this Deutz is something. Crikey. Okay. Let's see now. Um, 
Like, this is like a Power Ranger. Oh, yeah. Uh, where's that snake around here as well? There it is. Um, grand. I'm just going to buy this field quickly and then we'll, uh, we'll be able to crack on with that. It's only, it's only little. It won't take us too long. A couple of fine drivers like yourself here, Chris, will get this knocked out in no time. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, de oh, God. Go right. There you go. Jeez, you don't want to know how much I've just spent on that little field. Oh. Uh, oh, our, our, our snake. I know. I'm not fond of snakes, and even that one gives me the shudders. I hate it. <laughs> oh, get through that. Alrighty. All right. uh, let me see how I'm unfolding this then. There we go, that'll do. Looks like we're going this way. Tidy stuff. Um, so obviously, as you mentioned there, you had a little bit of time away from the channel last year, which perhaps may have um, kind of slowed down growth, would that be fair to say? Um, mm -hmm. Would you... Oh yeah, definitely. What would you say, like, if you were looking at your channel now, and you know, you're gonna set out like a plan, uh, do you have any aspirations in mind for where you can, where you go to, what you want to achieve with, uh, with your channel? Um, at the minute, um, at the minute I'm happy enough to what I'm doing at the minute, but I, I'm kind of limited to what I can do, so we'll have to see. I'm going to try just uploading maybe time lapses and stuff like that for now, mm. but... Yeah, I'm not too bad at where it goes at the minute. It seems to be doing alright on its own a lot of the time. That's good. And it's just, yeah, yeah, it's, it takes away, so it does. Yeah. So, but yeah, definitely, like, if I hadn't stopped, if I hadn't, if it hadn't happened what I happened, I probably would be a lot bigger now at this stage. But, sure, these things do happen. And they do, so sometimes life gets in the way, right? Uh huh. Oh. There it was picking up that stage too which was crazy like so that oh, was coming into the summertime it was it was starting to take off at the right time too yeah See, summertime coming into which was crazy so oh yeah we'll, we'll i mean get I, there. I think the thing is as well it's because it, i mean i must have found your I've, I've like i've known of your channel for a long time i, I probably started to follow it probably about uh, when i really got into my own channel because i like to just keep an eye on you know on the like kind of the community of those uh, producers who I, I follow when I'm if ever I'm like doing any editing of my own let's say I'll quite often just stick like a, a time lapse on or a stream on in the background and I'll comment a little bit and I'll you know say hello but then I'll just lurk in the background as I'm kind of working uh, and so yours was one of those streams and I started to keep an eye on your kind of your content and it's definitely like there's a lot of uh, like I would say fresh kind of feeling with yours there. It still feels great. It's still got a good vibe to it. So I think it's definitely like organic enough to continue to grow. Um, oh yeah. I think it's it's definitely definitely going to keep doing that if you just continue to do what you do. I think it's fantastic. So uh, yeah. I'm sure there'll be no problems there. I know. No I take away what I'm doing at the minute, especially the maps as well. Depending. On, oh god, that was a big spike. Um, especially sometimes the maps help as well. Mm. As well. So we'll have to see. I'm just going to have to see what happens over the next couple of weeks as well. It all depends on what map you're playing and what you do at that certain time. Exactly. You can get an awful yeah. in influx of people coming in as well. Trying to find the right trend, right? And then riding the wave. Oh yeah, that's the main one. Uh, maybe that, that wave is fishing in the Barren Sea. No pun intended. No, oh, yeah. It's still, that's still a, a young game as well, so I will be playing more of that when I get, as I say, when I get my, my dog topped up. <laughs> But yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I've just lost all my speed. I've knocked my cruise control down. There we go. All right. So we're gonna finish up here with a few kind of quick fire questions, Chris. Um, obviously this first one has a bit of scope to it. Nine, like ten years of playing, uh, many different maps across that time. Uh, what would be your favourite mod map um, you've ever played on, and why? Mm, oh God. I and played many, many maps. There's a I, lot there, yeah. I think this, all over, over the 10 years, I think I've over like a thousand different maps probably played at this stage. Good lord. Yeah, I'd say I wouldn't be far off it, like I played some. Um, I bet, yeah. 13, I, if I'm starting from 13, Spring Hill was a good one. Spring Hill Valley by um, in Imod. Well, the only reason I've kind of played Spring Hill because of, of the silage and stuff. Mm. Multiplayer side of it. Um, 
Oh, there was another very brag. There was another map in, another big map in there. Oh god, I got this. Just give me a sec. Oh, there we go. Um, and then Colbert Park. Then you come in. That was not a good one. Um, there's there's another map on there as well. And like it's the, the, for the life of me, I can't think of it. The name has gone clear out of my head. Um, ah, yeah, there was there's lots of maps, but like I say, modern maps will always keep your attention. You'll always find yeah. something that you'll enjoy to play. Oh, a hundred percent. And what's great about it is you can always have like two or three save games on the go. Um, and you know it's like okay, so now I want to go and let's say do some silage. We'll jump onto Spring Hill. And then when you want to go and maybe focus a little bit more on arable somewhere, then you'll find like a, a Cobra Park farm was great for that for me. I've still got a Cobra game save going on now that I keep flicking back to every so often, just to kind of just oh, for yeah. my own for my own pleasing really. Uh, okay, I'm gonna jump up here. All right. Um. So favorite favorite mod of all time. So something that could be a script or a machine. Something that you know when you download that really changed the the gameplay for you. Uh, and your involved your enjoyment of the game. I I'd be going back to Nine Modern again here. Their um, their Irish stuff like their moors and their trailers, their GF and all that. Their, the, the, even the book wrecks and stuff mm. was a big influence for me. Because they the had day. all of the um, oh, like and did the they tankers. make all the heron trailers and all of the um, did they do the cane trailers? Was that in Nine Modern originally? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, eleven. A big in an eleven. Yeah, I remember that. They were pretty huge, definitely. Well, that was a big thing, and then they had ra they had well for thirteen they had their own rake in as well. Nice. Uh, and that's the thing, like if you're playing multiplayer with a group of guys who all like use and enjoy the same equipment, then that's that's part and parcel of the game, right? That makes everything uh, seem that much oh, better yeah. for you. Especially like say the cane trailer, especially the Irish la guys. Mm. Like, you have your cane trailers in, and you have your your Donnelly trailers in, and your Woods trailers in, and like you have your Buck Ricks in, and all that stuff. Like your moors, your butterfly moors was in at that stage. Well, their swarters were in. Like it was mental back then. Like. Yeah. And then they had their Ford. They had the tractors in as well. Their four thousand series. Oh, they had the four like thousand. That yeah, that's a heck of a tractor. That's a heck of a mod. Oh yeah. Really something. Oh. Awesome. And we'll we'll uh, we'll wrap it up with this last quick question here. Um, now this can be across either like the YouTube platform or just uh, like FS UK forum, for example. Who would be your favourite? Uh, or the, let's give us the top three favourite um, farming simulator personalities. Let's say. Oh, this Um. Well. You would have like at the minute, like at the peak now, you have what similar simulation, and you've landed kid, mm. like and and you have Rainbow Dave. But they've all like they all have their own diff own personalities. Yeah, they're fun. Like they're if you go into their streams, there's always something go going on, or there's always some bit of banter happening and stuff like that. And cr and Crazy Dave as well. <laughs> you know, and you'll always get something. Strange happening with Dave, or he's always up to some mischief or something like that. <laughs> but I don't really, a lot of the time, I don't really watch a lot of YouTube outside of kind of. I only, I usually watch streams more than I watch videos. Yeah. I might no, be, I might be the odd that. video that I watch, depending on if it takes my interest and, and stuff. But I try and keep away from watching. A lot of them, like, they, they'd be the same, like, they probably wouldn't watch many videos, but they just hang out in the stream and stuff. It's more yeah, fun as well. it's like when you have a stream on, it's just nice background noise. If if you're busy doing something, it's you can you know you can drop into it now and again and comment on something, but you can just like leave it to do its thing. Um, or, or or cause um, mayhem. Exactly. <laughs> Come in, just Inside. cause like a whole world of trouble, and then just like mic drop and walk away. Oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Alright buddy, well we are, that is us done for our questions, um, and we don't have to finish this field, I'm just going to zip up this side and mow in it, but uh, at this stage I'm delighted to say uh, thank you for being able to, to finally join us here, we had a few issues when we were trying to get this up works. and working the first time, but we've, we've made it through, it's been, uh, it's been really good fun, I really enjoyed it. 
reverse. No, you don't want to reverse. Man, I know we. I, I've actually. Whatever about the ping and the, the game itself, we've actually managed this time. No, she's she's stuck. She won't move. Man, there we go. There you go. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Gosh. No, it's been good. Now, if anyone here who is watching this who doesn't know where to find you, Chris, where would be the where where can they find you on YouTube or Facebook or wherever? Uh, you find me on YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, same name. I have Insta an Instagram account that I throw pictures up on. Are you on my Discord as well? Use your links are in my thing. Are you always find me in Rainbow Dave's Discord? Are you find me most of the streams anyways? If you're ever watching, you'll always find me in the streams. You'll always see me hang around in the streams. And what I'll do is I will get all those links from you and I'll, I'll copy them from one of your videos or something. We'll stick them in the description below. Um, and yeah, everything will be tidy. So if you don't already, I strongly encourage you to go and check out Chris the Irish Gamer. It's well worth a, a watch on his streams in particular. Uh, and you never know, he always surprises you with the odd time lapse that's sneaking in there as well. So, uh, definitely go and check that out for now, though, Chris. All that's left for me to say is thank you very much for joining me. Uh, it's been much appreciated. Uh, until next time, everybody, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have watched it at this stage, uh, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you have enjoyed it. Uh, and if you would like to, and if you haven't already, do of course hit that subscribe button to myself and also to Bob over there uh, in his flashing TW. Um, until next time, thank you very much as always for watching. I've been Simulation Fallen Nation. Do remember to stay safe, enjoy what you're doing, but most importantly, happy farming.